Hey guys, welcome back to Top 10 Nerd. I'm Rob McKenzie LaFergie. Ever since Groot sacrificed himself at the end of Guardians of the Galaxy and we were introduced to Baby Groot, fans have fallen in love with the adorable little guy. With Guardians 2 just released, we have a whole movie of cuteness to enjoy. But sometimes you miss cool things about him when you're distracted by the adorableness. So I'm here to remedy that. Here are the top 10 surprising facts about Baby Groot. Number 10. Baby Groot cheered kids up at a children's hospital. After Chris Pratt lost a bet with Chris Evans, his punishment was that he went to a children's hospital in costume, armed with an adorable Baby Groot figure, and visited the kids there. Unsurprisingly, both Pratt and the Baby Groot were a hit with the kids, showing that even as an inanimate object, Baby Groot is doing more good in the world than I do. Number 9. Baby Groot has a number of abilities. While it may be that in baby form his abilities are somewhat lessened, Groot does have some powers that we've yet to see in the films. Full disclosure, I haven't seen Guardians 2 yet since it just came out when I was writing this, so maybe some of this will be answered in the film. In the comics, Groot is able to draw wood to him psychokinetically to rebuild his own body and even command trees to fight for him. If we see a fight in the woods, Groot may really shine, and that's pretty gnarly. Ah. Puns. Number 8. Baby Groot wasn't created for the money. It just worked out that way. While the introduction of Baby Groot so early seemed to some as a cash grab by the creators due to his cuteness and appeal, director James Gunn denies this, claiming that he just feels strongly about the character. That's not to say he didn't see the popularity coming. He has said that, quote, I'm not an idiot. I knew if Baby Groot worked, the world would want Baby Groot toys and figures and plushies." End quote. But he went on to explain that he had simply fallen in love with the character and wanted to see him come to life on screen. And I'm inclined to believe him. Number 7. Baby Groot shows up pretty often in the comics since Groot has regenerated a number of times. Groot's starting to seem a bit expendable in the comics due to his ability to regenerate and has thus sacrificed himself a number of times. First was in a battle against Phalanx, when he helped the others escape, then turned to fight the forces of Phalanx. He died in the battle, but was able to come back and eventually regrow. Then later, when he had finally regained his form, he intentionally set himself up to die again to destroy the Babel Spire. After setting aside a twig that could help him regenerate, he boosted his cellular growth and was lit on fire, destroying the spire. Each of these deaths was followed with him spending some time regrowing as Baby Groot. And although he isn't quite as cute in the comics, he's still pretty great. Number 6. In the comics, Groot was actually recruited to the Guardians of the Galaxy as Baby Groot. While he did work together with Star-Lord to fight Phalanx, he wasn't actually recruited to Star-Lord's team as the Guardians of the Galaxy until after the events had ended. After his sacrifice to destroy the Babel Spire, Baby Groot and his buddy boy Rocky were at a bar when they were approached by Star-Lord to join his team. While Baby group suggested that the team be called Groot and Branches. They understandably went with Guardians of the Galaxy instead. I still think Groot and Branches is better. Number 5. There's some disagreement as to whether Baby Groot is just a young version of Groot or an offspring that kept certain memories. The whole regeneration thing brings up a number of questions. Is he creating life when he creates extra Groots? Is his consciousness transferred on death or is it duplicated on the creation of the new cutting? And this is all further convoluted because he lacks many of his old memories in the film. But in the comics he generally retains his memories. Personally, I'm of the opinion that Baby Groot is an offspring of Groot and that the Groot we saw in Guardians 1 is dead. It's sad, but since it's possible for Groot to make cuttings in advance of his death, I think Baby Groot is just an offspring. But this is definitely debatable. Let me know what you think in the comments. This whole thing is kind of a similar issue with that of teleportation. Would your consciousness end when you're teleported and a new copy's made? I could talk about this for hours, but don't worry, I won't. Or will I? Number 4. To go along with the lack of memories, Baby Groot is just that, a baby. For those of you who have seen the film, you'll know that he's very childlike and mischievous, and not particularly smart. Not that he's a rocket scientist when he's big. If you haven't seen the movie, prepare yourself for a very different Groot from the stoic, silent guy we got to know in Guardians 1. Many people, myself included, feel that Baby Groot really fills out the team, and his new personality helps to differentiate him from the other large and imposing character, Drax. Number 3. Baby Groot is exploding 
thing in pop culture. Uh, you probably already know about all the Baby Groot merchandise from action figures to t-shirts, but he's actually going to be getting his moment in the spotlight in other ways. He has a new series of comics coming out on May 24th called I Am Groot, which will follow Baby Groot's adventures stranded on an alien planet. There also may be a Baby Groot movie on the way. In an interview, Vin Diesel said that a solo Groot spin-off may be inevitable. According to him, James Gunn has talked about the possibility of the film and seemed very interested. While he wasn't speaking specifically about Baby Groot, I feel like the incredible popularity of the baby form of the character and the obvious opportunity to make a super child-friendly film might be too much for filmmakers to pass up. Number 2. Baby Groot is an unofficial ambassador for Earth Day. In a joint effort from Marvel, the Disney Conservation Fund, and the Nature Conservatory, a tree was promised to be planted for every instance of hashtag Groot Dance Bomb on social media leading up to the release of the film. While this was definitely partially done as a way to get publicity for the film, it's a pretty great way to do it. Plus, it's super fitting since Groot is, you know, a tree. Which brings me to my next point. Number 1. Baby Groot isn't a tree. Ah, I lied to you just then, suckers. Okay, it wasn't a lie per se, but it wasn't the whole truth. While Groot has the appearance of a tree, he's actually a member of a tree-like species, previously thought to be extinct, that the Cree named the Floral Colossus. So now you have a fact you can use to be super annoying and pedantic whenever people call Groot a tree. Hooray! That's it for now. Hope you guys enjoyed, and even if my hosting was crap, at least you got to see a bunch of adorable pictures of baby Groot. If you liked what you saw, smack that thumbs up button and subscribe to Top 10 Nerd for more videos. Feel free to check out my own YouTube channel, link below. I finally resolved some technical issues, so I'm excited to get rolling. Uh, who do you like better, Big Groot or Baby Groot? Let me know in the comments down below. Until next time, I'm Ron McKenzie LaFerge with Top 10 Nerd. Later, nerds.